Throughout history, bold new ideas have had dramatic impacts on society, but none more so than Darwin's dangerous idea, evolution by means of natural selection. It was an idea whose implications shook the foundations of not only the scientific world, it fundamentally changed the way humans viewed themselves and every other living thing on the planet. It was the single greatest threat to religious orthodoxy the church has ever seen. When a 22-year-old naturalist named Charles Darwin set sail aboard the HMS Beagle in the early 1830s, he had no idea that upon his return nearly five years later, he would bring with him an insight into nature that would send shockwaves around the globe. He had embarked on an epic journey of exploration and what he discovered marked the beginning of a new era in human thought and scientific understanding. Time spent on the Galapagos Islands led Darwin to question how it could be that finches he found could be so different from island to island, yet were clearly descendants of a single ancestor. But it was when the ship weighed anchor at Tierra del Fuego that would prove to be the start of an epiphany which Darwin later knew could potentially cost him his scientific reputation, his freedom, his life, and even his immortal soul. Aboard the Beagle with Darwin were three Fuegans whom the ship's captain had captured on a previous visit to Tierra del Fuego. They were looked upon mostly as a curiosity. They had been taken to Britain, taught to speak English, given new names, converted to Christianity, and were now returning home to establish a Christian mission. But when in 1832 they landed on the untamed shores of Wollaston Island, Darwin discovered that the native Fuegans were savage brutes, and very unlike their westernized kinsmen whom Darwin had come to know. He made comment in his journal of their hideous faces bedaubed with white paint, their skins filthy and greasy, their voices discordant, their gestures violent. And yet, despite their almost animalistic primitive strangeness, they were undeniably human. Darwin would spend many hours pondering this in the context of evolution, and later write, one's mind hurries back over past centuries and asks whether our ancestors could be such as these. When the Beagle returned to England, Darwin began his work in earnest. He had brought home with him five years worth of notes and collected specimens and a new understanding of humanity, not as above nature, but as part of it. And it led him to that most basic of questions. Where do we come from? In 1838, on a trip to the zoo, Darwin got his first look at an extraordinary creature, never before seen in Britain an orangutan named Jenny. The young naturalist was immediately captivated by her expressions and mannerisms and the sense that she understood everything her keeper said to her. Darwin later wrote, let man visit the orangutan in domestication and see its intelligence. In further reflection, Darwin considered the Fuegans and compared them to Jenny and to himself. He was shocked by the similarities, and he finally came to understand the deep connection, not only between himself, the Fuegans, and the ape, but all life on Earth. He realized the inescapable evolutionary conclusion. All living things descended from a common ancestor. Man, in his arrogance, thinks of himself as a great work, Darwin wrote. More true is to consider him created from animals. As a respectable Christian, Darwin knew full well the implications of his revolutionary concept. We were not the special creation of God. Humans evolved, just like everything else in nature. Man, wonderful man, he said, must collapse into nature's cauldron. He is not a deity. He is no exception. 
It was some time later, after having spent a good deal of time speaking with dog, pigeon, and horse breeders, that Darwin came to understand the mechanism which drove evolution. Just as the breeders selected which traits they desired to be passed on to the next generation, so too it was in nature. But it was the struggle to survive and reproduce which did the selecting. He called this principle natural selection. Within this elegant framework, religious dogma regarding divine creation disintegrated. Descent from a common ancestor meant there was no Adam and Eve and no need for a god, only the indifferent processes of nature, the survival and reproduction of those best suited. With the stroke of a pen, Darwin's dangerous idea demolished the biblical account of creation. He said, the Old Testament was no more to be trusted than the views or beliefs of any barbarian. Darwin knew his theory would be met with hostility from the church, so he spent the next 20 years privately gathering evidence to support it. On November 24, 1859, he finally published On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection. The uproar from the Church of England was as expected. The religious hierarchy immediately attacked Darwin and his theory, but the scientific community stood behind the evidence. The church understood the disastrous consequences of this revelation. Without Adam and Eve, there could be no original sin, and thus no need for Jesus to redeem humanity. The entirety of the Bible was revealed as myth. For the next 150 years, the church waged a massive and well-funded propaganda campaign to discredit evolution. Meanwhile, scientific fields like biology, anthropology, paleontology, embryology, and genetics have validated, strengthened, and refined the theory. Many have tried to disprove it. All have failed. And the mountain of evidence supporting evolution continues to grow. Today, religious zealots launch their pointless barbs against the impenetrable edifice of evolutionary science and use deception, pseudoscience, and political pressure in an effort to maintain their tenuous power. For they know that without the Genesis fable of Adam and Eve, the rest of their superstitious house of cards crumbles. And they too, like the dinosaurs, which Noah left off the ark, must go extinct. But if you still deny the overwhelming scientific evidence and cling to the false notion of a magical creation written in a barbaric Bronze Age fairy tale, Error, 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 error.